What's up guys, my name's Brandon and iOS 16 Beta 1 was just released and there are some pretty insane features that come with it. So before my in-depth video where I show you every single feature and change in the software, here are some of the standouts. Let's start with the messages application because we got a couple of features that we've been waiting for several years for, and that is the ability to edit and unsend messages. So if I typed out something and I wanted to unsend it, so if I go ahead and send this message right here and I you know, change my mind, I can go ahead and haptic press on that message and you can see we get two new options, undo send and edit. So if I tap on edit, you can see it gives me the option here to edit that message to whatever I want. Now I only have 15 minutes to edit this. After the 15 minutes pass, you're not able to edit that anymore, but you can type in whatever you want and then tap on the little check mark right there and it will say edited. So the other person will know that you edited that message. They cannot see a history of it, but it will say edited right there. You can edit it as many times as you want to. As you can see, I could keep on editing it and it still just shows that. So if I go in haptic press and then press undo send, however, it will erase that bubble and it will show me an alert right here saying that I unsent a message and the other person will see that you sent a message and unsent it. It won't show them what it was, but it will say that you unsent a message. Now here's the catch. If that person that you sent the text message to is not on iOS 16, they will still be able to see what you typed. It will not be removed from their message thread. So if you're gonna use this, you know, depending on what you use it for, you may wanna make sure the other person is on iOS 16. You'll also notice that we have a new way to send voice messages. So if we tap on the App Store icon right here to pull up the app drawer, you can see right next to the App Store is this little button right here, which allows you to send a audio message just like so. And you can see that is now how you send those audio messages. If I send that, you can see I have the ability to send it. And of course I could do the same thing, like undo send like I can for regular text as well. Now I cannot go any further in this video without mentioning the biggest change in iOS 16, and that is with the lock screen. So take a look at this lock screen, and I don't need to tell you, pretty much everything has changed here. And if I go ahead and haptic press on this, you could see that I also get options to change that here. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and show you the basics first. So if you go to the settings here and go to wallpaper, you will see this section is completely redesigned when we tap on add new wallpaper. So you can see here, everything has changed. So you have the option to change your wallpaper between people, photos, photo shuffle, emoji, weather, astronomy, or color. And if you tap on color, by the way, you can kind of make your own background color based on gradients or like a specific color that you like. And you can change between different types of gradients here as well, which I think is pretty neat. We also have collections, we have pride, we have emoji, we have unity, we have the earth right there, we have the weather, which is really cool because it shows like live weather, what's going on outside, it shows if it's raining, it shows if it's cloudy, it shows all that like a live animation. And you can see we have all these right here, which I think is just sick. So if I tap on collections right here, you can see we get the option now to add different like widgets to our lock screen, similar to what you could do on the Apple Watch. So for instance, if I did not want the date up top, I could simply tap on that and I could add something else there to replace it. So like if I really valued the weather, I could put this up right there. So if I tap on that, it will now show the date smaller and it will show the time over there of the sunset. So that's what I added in right there. If I just wanted to do the conditions, I could do that. So it shows the current temperature outside. Now what's really cool is we could change the font for the time right here. So if we tap on that, you can see we could change the font. I like this middle top one the best. We have different options for the font that we want. We could also change the color. So it's now set on a gradient. So it pulls in the dominant colors from this background and uses that. Or you could choose a specific color and you could see, you can really change the opacity, you could change everything. And then you could also utilize this section underneath of the clock right here to add in other widgets. So you can see here, we have the batteries, we have our calendar, clock, fitness, weather, all of these right there. So if I wanted to add batteries, I tap on that, and now I can tap or drag one of these to there. So if I wanted this long battery icon right there, you can see I could do that. If I wanted to add in, let's just say ABC News, I could add that right there. And we can see that shows up right there on our lock screen. If I tap these three dots down at the bottom, we have the ability to disable depth effects and enable perspective zoom. So let's tap on done and see how that looks. So it doesn't update right here, it's probably just a bug, but if we lock our screen, you can see our new lock screen right there it looks absolutely sick and it disappeared right there because I unlocked the phone. But if I go ahead and lock it again, you can see all that shows up right there. Also, you will notice the lock animation up top when I unlock my phone kind of disappears, which I think is really cool. 
Now, once you get to the lock screen, you can tap and hold on this, and you can see you can go through and change the collection right here. You could change the lock screen just straight from the lock screen, which I think is really awesome. And if you go ahead to customize right here, it takes you back to that customization screen. You could also tap on the plus icon right here to change that lock screen completely. And you could also link the lock screen to a specific focus mode. So if I tap on focus, it says select a focus to turn on with this lock screen. So you can change that right here as well. And then also if you have music playing, you can see this section down at the bottom is called live activities. And this is a dedicated spot on your lock screen for music, for sports games and things like that. So it will always show down here and notifications will show above that. So I think this is really cool. There's a lot more to come with this feature, especially related to sports games and things like that. But this is called the live activity section. The home screen wallpaper section is also completely revamped. So you can see this is the new look for the home screen wallpaper. You could also turn on or off the blur straight from here. So if you wanted to blur that without the need of a third party application, it's now built in. You have these different colors you could choose. You could configure them right there. You could choose the gradient or the solid color, or you could choose a photo from your library to use as the home screen wallpaper. Also, when you go to choose a wallpaper, you will see this screen here is different as well. You could choose between the regular picture or a black and white version of that. You could also tap these three dots right there for the perspective zoom and the depth effect. When you're done, just tap on done and we could tap done again. And now we have that home screen wallpaper. We also get some nice changes in the mail app. So this is the new splash screen in iOS 16. When you first open up the mail app, it shows you that you can now schedule sending messages. So you can choose when to send a message at a set time. You can get reminded of messages in the future and you could also undo messages. And unlike with iMessage, the other person will not know when you undo that message. So if we go into mail, I have an email pulled up right here. And if I tap on the share sheet, you can see if we scroll down right here, you will see we have a new option for mark for later. If you tap on that, it gives you the ability to remind yourself of that message in an hour until tonight, tomorrow, or just remind me later where you could set a specific date and time. And when you go to compose a new message, you will see you get a new little alert here saying that you can schedule to send later. So if I go ahead and type in an email. So if I type out my email and I tap and hold on the send button, you can see we get different options for send now, send at 9 p.m. tonight or tomorrow, or send at a set time and date. And then once I send that, you can see at the very bottom down here, we have the option to undo send. And when you tap on undo send, it brings you right back here and it saves everything in that message. So you can maybe tweak something or just decide you don't want to send that message. Another pretty cool feature in iOS 16 is that we now have a haptic feedback keyboard for every single key that we type. You could feel that haptic engine working. You could feel the haptic feedback on your fingers. Now to enable this, you need to go into your settings here and then go to sounds and haptics and then down to keyboard feedback, you will see that you now have the option for sound and haptics. So if you don't wanna hear the keys, you could turn off sound, but if you just want the haptics, you need to turn on haptic right there. Now, of course you do also need to have vibrations enabled. So if you go to your accessibility and then to touch, you need to make sure that vibration is turned on, but you will feel it right once you start typing. I know a lot of you guys love this feature. We also get a new section in settings when you connect your AirPods. So right here at the very top of your settings, when you have your AirPods paired, you will see it shows it right there. When you tap on that, it shows you a very nice UI up top of the case and the AirPods themselves and the battery percentage of each. And you get all of your controls right here. But I just like that there's a new setting panel, settings panel right here at the very top of your settings. Oh, and I should also mention that there's a new feature called personalized spatial audio. So basically it says here movie and TV show audio rendered immersively in three dimensions. You can set up personalized spatial audio for improved audio. So basically it's just going to have you put in your AirPods and you could use the iPhone to capture a high resolution scan of your ear geometry for improved spatial audio on all your Apple devices. So that is new with iOS 16 for the AirPods as well. We also have a pretty noticeable change down on the home screen where the page dots used to be. So you can see right there, it now says search. Now it does change when I change pages right there, it shows the page dots and then it goes back to search. Well, you can turn this off if you want to, but I think this is really cool. That is the new spotlight search and it's not really new. It's just a new UI. You can still swipe down because see the whole spotlight search looks different now. It shows up at the bottom and just looks cleaner. It looks more like Mac OS. You could also tap on that to search for anything on your device. Like if you wanted to find an application, a message, a photo, anything, you could do that to search for it. Now, like I said, you can turn that off 
you go to your settings and then go to home screen right here, you have the option to show spotlight. So you can turn that on or off. You can see when I turn it off, it does not show up anymore. So you guys know the live text feature, right? Where you can highlight text that you've taken a photo of and basically be able to copy and paste it. Well, now you can do that with videos. So take a look at this. I'm going to try to find a little bit of text in this video. If I zoom in on that right there, this is a video. Keep in mind, if I double press, actually, let me go ahead and hold down right there. You can see I could actually copy that text. I guess you can't do it when you're zoomed in. Yeah, you can. So there you go. You can see I could select the text right there from a video and I'm able to copy, select it, look it up, translate whatever I want while this video is like paused right here. But the fact that you can do that from a video is pretty awesome. So live text now works on videos. And then finally, I wanted to show you guys one cool feature in notes. So if you tap on the three dots up in the top right and then go to find in notes and then you search for like hi, let's say we wanted to replace the word hi with hello. If you tap on the little magnifying glass next to the search bar right there, a tap on that, you can see we get the option now to find and replace. So instead of just finding something on the page, we can now replace that. So go ahead to find and replace. And if I wanted to change from high to hello, you can see I could choose which version of high I want to change, or if I just want to change them all and tap on replace, replace, replace. And there we go. All of the highs in here are replaced with hello, which can be very useful if you have a long note written out. So yeah, guys, there you have it. That is just a quick video on some of the iOS 16 standout features. Like I said, I have a ton of coverage on iOS 16 coming up very, very soon, including my very in-depth video where I show you guys pretty much every change in iOS 16 that I can find. So if you guys want to see that video and continue coverage on iOS 16, iPadOS 16, and all the other software, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Also, if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.